Hey, what's up guys? It's Izzy from powerliftingtowin.com and today we're going to build on the video that I put out yesterday on powerlifting leverages. So what we were talking about, for those of you who haven't seen it, is moment force and lever arms and how we can actually measure the amount of leverage that we have to overcome in a lift. So here's what I want you to do. Think of a wrench. The wrench, the handle, is the moment arm. The wrench itself, you have to pull down on to turn the bolt, right? Well, what's a more effective wrench? A longer wrench or a shorter wrench? Well, we all know if you've used a wrench before that the longer the handle, the more leverage you're able to get, right? Well, the exact same thing happens in barbell training, only there's one problem. The bar acts as the hand on the wrench and our knees and hips and elbows, depending on the movement, are the bolts of the wrench. So we wanna make those handles as short as possible. Now let's take a look at what's going on with this exact concept in the squat. Okay, so as you can see in the squat, there are two relevant moment arms that we need to talk about. One is right there between the knee and the bar, and the other is between the hip and the bar. We can know the amount of leverage that we have to overcome in the squat by adding uh, the sum of, of those two lengths, right? So the sum distance between the hips and the bar and the knee and the bar is the amount of leverage that we have to overcome during the squat. And as power lifters, it's our job to make those moment arms as small as possible so that the weight that we're moving is, doesn't take more or more leverage to overcome, right? We want to minimize the amount of leverage that we have to overcome. So we're going to look at how to do that with bar position. So before we can really understand what's going on with bar position, first we have to establish that the bar has to travel over the middle of your foot. And here's why. The middle of the foot is where you are balanced, okay? It's the point on the foot where you have an equal amount of distance in front and behind that point. And what that means is that that is the point at which it's hardest to either tip you forwards or backwards. If you were closer to your toes, you'd be easier to tip forwards. If you were closer to your heels, you'd be easier to tip backwards. The point at which any system balances is the point at which it takes the most force to disrupt that balance or the point at which it is the easiest to maintain balance. And actually the middle of the foot is both. And if you don't believe me, here's what you can do. Stand up and lean forward and wait till you feel your calves start to get tense to hold you from falling forward. Now, start to lean backward on your heels. Watch how you throw your arms out to stop from falling. So when we're talking about bar position, the bar has to be over the middle of the foot. And with certain bar positions, this dictates a certain back angle. For example, in the front squat, you have to remain upright, otherwise the bar will just fall off of your shoulders. So I have a question for you guys. Which movement can you use more weight on, the front squat or the back squat? Well, if you're like 99.999% of the people that I've met, in fact, I've never met anybody who could front squat more than they could back squat, then you obviously squat more in the back squat than you do in the front squat. We needed to understand why. So here we have Mr. Stickman demonstrating the front squat for us. And we see that the bar is directly over the middle of the foot where it has to be. And what we can also see is that his knees are way out in front of the middle of his foot and the bar, and his hips are really close. The reason that this is happening is because he has to stay upright, and there's no way for him to be upright without his hips being pretty much underneath him, right? So why does this mean that he can use less weight? Well, here's the thing. What you're doing is reducing the moment arm between the hips and the bar. Well, that should be a good thing, right? We want to reduce the moment arms. Well, the problem is, is that you're proportionately increasing the lever arm between the bar and the knees. And here's the real kicker. The quadriceps, which are the group that controls knee extensions, they're a big muscle, right? Or a big muscle group. But they're simply not as strong and powerful as the collective group of muscles known as the posterior chain, which uh, involves the hamstrings, glutes, and adductors. So when we modify a movement, like the squat to the front squat, the reason we use less weight is because we're making the movement almost all quad, because the, almost the whole load of the leverage is shifted to the knees. Okay, so that's why you do less weight on a front squat. Now, there are three types of commonly used squats. We already talked about the front squat, right? And we know that really any type of back squat is going to let us use more weight than the front squat because a back squats let us use more hips. Now, well, this has interesting implications because we have to decide between the high bar back squat, which is there in the middle, and the low bar back squat on the right side. And I'm here to tell you that for pretty much every single person out there, the low bar back squat is going to be uh, used 
for more weight. You're gonna be able to do more weight low bar. Let's take a look at why. I wanna quickly remind you what our reason was for deciding that the front squat was able to do less weight than the back squat or why we do less weight on the front squat. And that was because it shifts the lever arm more to the knee right? The total length of the lever arms goes more towards the knee and less towards the hip, meaning that you have to use more quad and less hip to overcome gravity. Well, I want you to take a close look at these pictures here of a typical low bar squat and a typical high bar squat and think about what you're seeing. In a low bar squat, we have shifted way more of the leverage to the hips than the knees. And in a high bar squat, while there's more leverage on the hips than in a front squat, it's still way less than what you're going to get with the low bar position. Because in a high bar back squat, you have to stay at least somewhat upright or the bar rolls onto your neck. In a low bar back squat, you can lean over more and you have to lean over more because the bar is lower on your back and that means you need to get it, still get it over the middle of your foot and the only way to do that with the bar low on your back is to lean over. Now, the, again, the low bar squat is going to let you use more weight because it places more of the leverage on the hips and the hips are bigger and stronger than the quads. So I want to show you guys a real world example of me doing a high bar squat versus a low bar squat. And you can really see that Mr. Stickman over there was pretty accurate with what happens. In my high bar squat, you can see my knees are much more forward of my toes and my hips are much closer to the bar. Whereas with my low bar squat over there, yes, I'm more linked over, but my hips are much further behind the bar and my knees are much closer, meaning that I'm going to get a more hip dominant squat with a lower bar position. Assuming that two athletes are both taking a low bar position on the squat, the way that we can know who has less leverage to overcome during the movement is almost primarily done by looking at who has longer legs. Because if you look at the graphic here, the person who has longer legs is going to have more leg on either side of the bar. And what that means is that the hips are going to be further away from the bar and the knees probably are too. And remember, the further away that joint is from the bar, it's the same as having a longer handle on the wrench when you're pulling the bolt. So the main question that this gives us is, well, what can we do to get shorter legs? We can't obviously take out a hacksaw and cut our leg in half, but we really don't need to. The trick to this is to just stand wider. While taking a wider stance isn't actually going to change the length of your leg, what it is going to do is decrease the horizontal distance between your hips and your knees. And the reason for that is shown very clearly by this picture. Okay, when you stand wider, you rotate your femur out more. And when the femur rotates out at a diagonal angle, well, the length of the leg hasn't changed, right? The hip and the knee are still far apart from each other as they were before, but horizontally, they're closer together. And when we're talking about moment arms, we're talking about the horizontal distance between the knee and the bar and the hip and the bar. So by standing wider and making sure that we push our knees out, we decrease those moment arms. And so what really follows here is that taking a wider stance is going to let you squat more weight. Okay, so again, I wanted to give you guys a real world example of how this actually works. So what I did is I took a picture of me, a side view of both my medium stance low bar squat and a wider stance low bar squat. To define medium, it was slightly outside of shoulder width. My heels were slightly outside of shoulder width. With the wide stance, my toes were touching the rack. So I was probably a good foot, foot and a half outside shoulder width. I've, on both pictures, I've drawn a yellow line from the front of my knee to the end of my hip. I did that on my medium stance squat. Then I copied and pasted the line onto the other picture, and you can see that from the front of the knee to the end of the hip, well, it, it goes off of the picture into that black area because when you take a wider stance and keep your knees pushed out, what you're doing is decreasing the horizontal distance between those two points. And keep in mind, my medium stance was already just outside of shoulder width. If you squat just inside of shoulder width, you're going to get an even bigger impact from this technique change. All right, guys, there was a lot that I glossed over in this video for the sake of YouTube brevity. So if you want a more thorough, detailed examination of squat leverages and how to manipulate your squat technique to lift the most weight possible, check out the articles in the description box. If this was helpful content, please subscribe. And as always, check out powerliftingtowin.com for more powerlifting information. Have a good one.